C-Sharp events are great. They are fast, simple and built right into the language. But once your project grows, having too many of them can turn your code base into a mess. Suddenly, you've got scripts referencing each other everywhere. In this video, I will show you an alternative way to handle events in your game, using a custom event bus. It's a super simple system that lets your script talk to each other without any direct references. We'll go through how it's built, how to use it and why it can make your code base cleaner and easier to maintain. We will also talk when to use the event bus and when traditional c -sharp events still make sense. So, what exactly is an event bus? Imagine there is a bulletin board in your neighborhood coffee shop. Anyone can post a message on it. Maybe someone writes, lost cat near Elm Street. Please call if found. Other people walking by can read the board whenever they want. Someone may see the note and decide to help look for the cat. Now, here's the key part. The person posting the note has no idea who is going to read it. And the reader doesn't know who exactly posted it. They just care about the content of the message. They can react and for example call the number on the note. They are completely decoupled, connected only through the board itself. That's exactly how an event bus works in your game. A script publishes an event, posts a message. Other scripts subscribe to that event. They check the board for messages they care about. Neither side knows or depends on the other. They just communicate through the board, the event bus. In a game, a good example for this is when an enemy gets destroyed. After an enemy gets destroyed, we want to spawn some loot to add some points to our score and also to progress in our Destroy 6 enemies quest. But the enemy does not need to know about all of those systems. When it gets destroyed, it just posts a message on the bulletin board and all other systems that are interested can now read the message and do whatever they need to do. This is a great system when you want to connect things that have nothing to do with each other. There is no real connection between a quest system and an enemy for example. But there still are some cases where classic events can make sense. Imagine that an enemy has a health bar UI. We maybe have some effects that constantly decrease the health of the enemy. In this case, we need to update the UI every frame. Here, we for example want a direct c -sharp event subscription or a direct reference to the UI. This would be a great case where c -sharp events still make sense. The health bar is related to the enemy and cannot exist without an enemy, so we don't need to decouple it. Solving this use case with the event bus would be an overkill. But enough theory, let's build the system. In the project I have already prepared a few things. We have a prefab for the coin and for the enemy. The prefabs are super simple. The coin just has a sprite renderer and the enemy has a sprite renderer and a collider so that we can register clicks. In the hierarchy we have the setup section with our camera and some other default setup stuff. The UI holds our score text and quest text. Inside managers we will have some managers later. And inside the view we have our 10 enemy prefabs. That's the whole setup. Let's start with implementing the event bus. For this we create a new event bus folder inside the scripts folder. And create two scripts. The iGame event and the event bus. Those are all the necessary scripts for the system. All other scripts later will be for demonstration purpose on how to use the system. The iGame event will be an interface and will actually contain nothing. It is just helpful to have a common base for all events. The event bus will also be no mono behavior but a static class. This way we can always access it. It will have a dictionary which will hold all the subscribers. Then. We will also have three methods here. One method to subscribe to an event, one to unsubscribe and one to publish an event which will then trigger all subscribers. The subscribe and unsubscribe method both have a generic type parameter t where t has to be an iGame event. And both also take a handler. The handler is the action that it should 
The handler is the action that is executed when the event is published. Inside the subscribe method, we first get the type and then we try to get the value for the type, so the delegate list. If there is none, we create a new list and add it to the dictionary. Then we add the handler to that list. The unsubscribe method is similar. Here we also get the type and check if there is a value for the type. If there is a value, we remove the handler from the list and also remove the list if it has no more handlers. The publish method gets the event as parameter. It will just go through each item in the list for the given event type and trigger each action. And that's the whole system. It is very simple. Now let's use it in our project. For this, we will need a few more scripts. In the scripts folder, we will create an event folder where we can create all our game events. The one we want here is the enemy destroyed event, which should get triggered when an enemy is destroyed. The event will inherit from iGameEvent and will just hold some data. In this case, we need the enemy that was destroyed, so we save a reference to it here. We don't have the script for enemy yet, but we will create it next. The enemy script will stay a mono behavior. In our example, we want to destroy the enemy when we click on it. For this, we will use the onMouseDown method. When we click the enemy, we first publish the enemy destroyed event. We pass this enemy as parameter and we use the event bus here. Then we destroy the game object. Oh, and we have a weird typo here and a method name. As you can see, the enemy does not need any reference to the score system or the loot system. It just tells the event bus that it was destroyed. The enemy does not care who will react to that event. One important note here is that we use the onMouseDown method, which only works with the alt input system. So if you follow this tutorial, you maybe have to activate the alt system in the project settings, which is not activated by default in Unity 6. But you also can just have another trigger for the enemy destruction instead of the mouse click. In play mode, we can now see that we can destroy the enemies. But we now have to react to this event by something. Let's create three scripts for this. The loot manager, the quest manager, and the score manager. The loot manager will be responsible for the loot. It will take a reference to the coin and will have a method that spawns loot at a 50% chance at a given position. To connect it, we will have an onEnemyDestroyed method which will subscribe to the event bus for the enemy destroyed event. It will just trigger the spawn loot method at the enemy's position. In on enable and on disable, we use the subscribe and unsubscribe method from the event bus to connect the on enemy destroyed method to the enemy destroyed event. And that's it. That's how you use the system. Let's test it in play mode. Before we hit play, we have to assign the loot variable and the loot system. We use our coin prefab here. Now when we destroy enemies, they sometimes spawn loot. It's great because the enemy is not connected to any system and the loot manager also does not know who triggers this event. Let's implement two other example systems here. The quest manager will have the same structure. It will have a quest text reference and will track the current progress count and the target progress count. The increase quest progress method will increase the progress and will check if it has reached the target progress.
we connected to the event bus in a similar way to how we did it in the loot manager. Let's also do something similar for the score manager. In Unity, we assign the UI tags to the managers and can then hit play. When an enemy is destroyed, we now sometimes spawn loot and we also increase the score and the quest progress. And all of that without that the systems know each other. They just know the event bus. This system easily upgrades any game architecture and makes it more decoupled. I hope. You have liked the video and found it helpful. I would really appreciate a like and a sub. It helps me a lot. Thank you for watching and see you next time.